Okay, this is a video that I tried to make a while ago and I didn't quite have my thoughts super organized enough. We'll see how this goes because I can't say I'm any more organized about this now than I was then. Um, but this is something that was like a, a really big change and I found was really important to my development as an adult. Uh, and that was quitting hormonal birth control. So just to preface, this is not medical advice, I'm not a doctor, that this is just my experience and, and what my journey was like. Um, but I think it's, it's valuable insight if you're considering quitting hormonal birth control, if you're not sure. Um, I quit back in July of 2021 and I personally will never go back. Um, but if you have like real medical questions about your hormones and, and your cycle and everything, talk to your doctor. This is not, this is not actual medical advice. Um, but yeah, I guess let's start where all great stories start. That's when I got my period. Um, I was 12 and I got it in French class and it was horrible. It was a nightmare. It was the worst. Um, and this was around the same time that we were taking like health education, sex ed, those, that kind of thing that you get in middle school. Um, and just learning, you know, the ins and outs of what actually happens during your menstrual cycle, during your period and stuff. It really pissed me off. I was like, that is not fair. None of the boys have to go through that. I didn't sign up for this shit. What do you mean I'm I'm scheduled for debilitating pain every month for the next, you know, 50, 60 years or whatever? That's not fair. That's I I must be built wrong. This is incorrect information. This is bullshit. Um Yeah. And and then my period came and kind of proved a lot of my anxieties right. And I was a really really tiny kid. Still am. But the symptoms and the flow were just really intense. Like I would have cramps that would keep me up all night. I would bleed through like everything. Um, and my, my skin just like blew up. I had acne all over my forehead, really deep, painful cystic breakouts like along my chin. Um, and you know, that's kind of the age where you're developing as a person and kind of making your own personality and to not be proud of your own face. That's really hard. Um, and I just, you know, there was a day when I had to go to school early to take a test and the cramps woke me up in the morning. And I remember being on the bathroom floor in like child's pose, retching because I hadn't eaten anything yet, but the cramps were so bad. They were making me throw up. And then I had to like put my clothes on and pack my backpack and go downstairs and get to school and take a fucking test. Um, so I think a combination of all of those things, I was probably like 15 or 16 when I started talking to my mom, like, I can't do this. <laughs> this is awful. And I got shit to do. I got classes, I got tests. I was in a theater company. I was running around. I had dance classes. I, I can't do this. And I just, I, I remember thinking like, if I lose this much blood every month for the next however many decades, I'm gonna die. Like this, this cannot be right. Send me back to the factory settings. This is wrong, we gotta do this again. Where's my warranty? Um, so, you know, my mom was very democratic about it and she was like, you know, there could be other symptoms, you know, you, you might gain a lot of weight, it might affect your mood, it, you know, she tried to counsel me best she could on that. Um, so I was put on ortho tricycline, which is, you know, compared to the other medications on the market, it's pretty light as far as like the dosage of hormones that you get. Um, I had some anxiety about like what, you know, how I would react to taking this, like I had never, I had never been put on any kind of like sick like a, a, a medication regimen of any kind it was new to be like taking a pill every day for something um 
the only things that happened were my skin cleared up and my period got super light and regular. So I was like, fucking bomb. This is great. I'm, I'll be on this forever. It solved all my problems. My skin didn't get like totally clear. Like I would still get, you know, the breakout here and there. I still have like scar tissue on scar tissue that I'm still trying to like laser away. Um, but for the most part, like it just became manageable. And that was kind of the point. Um, I did have stress level spikes and, you know, pretty intense emotional stuff, but it's, it's kind of unclear if that's more connected to like teenage hormones that I would have felt anyway. Life was kind of stressful. You know, you're a teenager, you're learning to drive, you're taking tests, you're trying to figure your life out. There was a lot going on. So maybe I would have felt that way anyway. Um, and also, you know, plus I'd go to college. I didn't end up pregnant. So cheers to that. I did find though, that of the emotional problems that would come up, anger was just a really intense one. Like something would happen and I would like just go nuclear. Like I could feel my cortisol levels just spiking and I would, I would start, like I would get so mad about stuff, I would start sweating and I would like call my mom and just like have these like rants to her. I would just be so pissed about stuff and she'd be like, what is wrong with you? You gotta take a walk, you gotta get some perspective, something. But in hindsight, that, that might have been connected in some way to the medication that I was taking and how, you know, the birth control was affecting my cortisol levels and, and my general anxiety levels. And I just found that, you know, there were highs and lows emotionally, but the highs were never that high and the lows were really, really low. And if I got to a low place, I would kind of stay there for a while. So it wasn't until the pandemic, really, when we were all locked in the house and I had a lot of time alone to think and feel. Um, and it was around that time that I, I, I don't even know how I really came across this podcast episode, but Dr. Jolene Brighton was a guest on a podcast that I kind of stumbled upon. Um, and she is a naturopathic endocrinologist and just has a wealth of knowledge about female hormones, the hormone cycle, uh, how birth control can affect your mood, how birth control can affect your appetite, your weight, all of those things, all those things that are connected to your hormones. So probably a combination of stressors being, you know, what was happening in the world and the medication that I was on, I started listening to more and more of her, what, what, like when she was a guest on podcasts. And her whole perspective is that like, she's not, she's not gonna try to make birth control the enemy. There are definitely times when getting on birth control makes sense, when you, you need to manage your life, you need to manage your pain levels, and birth control would be the right thing for you to do. However, as a medication that women are just like put on, there are many cases where it's like, okay, let's take a step back. You're having really intense period pain. Could that be related to just how your body is or might be, we be looking at like endometriosis? And what can we do in our lifestyle and in our diet to try to manage that endometriosis before we turn to something like a prescription? She has kind of viewed birth control as a band-aid that a lot of doctors have thrown around as just like an easy fix. Oh, you have bad skin, birth control. Oh, you have stomach issues, birth control. You have really intense periods, birth control. Without fully looking at like the causes behind those symptoms because the symptoms are your body calling out for something, calling out for help, calling out for vitamins, calling out for some kind of change. And by just slapping birth control onto it, you're kind of just muting those messages. You're not actually fixing the root cause of anything. She also has a lot of great insight about post birth control syndrome and how when you take these synthetic hormones away and your body has to sort of naturally readjust its hormonal cycle, 
you might in some ways go back to having the hormonal conditions that you did when you were first put on birth control. What was going on with me hormonally at age 15, 16, the age that I was when I was put on birth control, that might be where I go back to when I get off birth control. And it's gonna take some time to sort of naturally find your hormonal rhythm, naturally find your cycle again, and just kind of find a healthy way to ride those symptoms back out and finding more natural ways, be it in your diet or in your lifestyle or in the supplements that you're taking to manage those symptoms as they come up. Cause you are gonna feel them that they are gonna happen, um, but they shouldn't be like ruining your life. So it was in July of 2021 that I was like, I'm not filling this prescription again. I'm on my last pack. Let's, you know, I didn't really wean myself off. I just kind of let the pack run out and had a period on that last pack and then was kind of done. And I kept, I kept one pack kind of on retainer just in case like things really went haywire. And I was like, fuck it, I'll just, I'll just go back on. Um, and within the first few months, yeah, the period got, got intense again. I wouldn't say that it was like at the level of intensity as I had when I was, you know, a teenager, when I was 13, 14, 15. Um, but it has definitely come back uh, and it's a much stronger part of my life again. That's a, a nice way to put it. Um, and throughout like late 2021, early 2022, my skin definitely went back to what I was seeing when I was a teenager, maybe even a little bit worse. Um, looking at old pictures from that time, it was like the entire bottom part of my face. Not, not really like big breakouts, but it was just a lot of them. Um, so I started using a company called Apostrophe um, and they're like an online dermatology group. So I was put on spironolactone and I've been using tretinoin since I want to say like early 2022. Um, and yeah, give and take, you know, I got off hormonal birth control because I didn't want to take a pill every day. And now I'm on spironolactone for acne and taking a pill every day. Um, but spironolactone is just a water pill. It doesn't do anything intense to your hormones. It just kind of dries your, it just kind of dries you out. Um, and since then, I think this is probably the best skin that I've had in the past probably 15 years. <laughs> um, you'll still get, you know, I still get the occasional breakout here and there, but they're pretty small. They go away pretty quickly. They don't leave very deep scars. Um, and it's just, it's manageable. I think because of the spironolactone and the tretinoin. My hair. I did experience a fair amount of hair loss, which was scary. I think I would have been more scared if I didn't know what was happening or why. Um, but it was something I was kind of expecting and it wasn't a ton, like I, I wasn't getting bald spots or anything. I just noticed that like my ponytail is just a little bit thinner. <laughs> so I think my hair just thinned out a bit. Um, thin hair is, not thin hair, but fine hair is something that's pretty common with the women in my family in particular. So it wasn't that shocking to me. Um, but the hair that has been growing back has been coming back curly, which is fun still figuring out what to do with that. Um, and it has taken a little bit more maintenance because it's it's coming in dry. Like I just find that maybe it's the lack of, of those sexy fun hormones pumping through my veins. Um, my skin is just a little bit drier and, and the hair is coming back a bit drier. Also with the hair, and this is, this is actually cool. I'm actually pretty excited about this new development. Um, I'm starting to get little gray hairs here and there. And I had heard that that could have been a thing as your hormones kind of reset and your hair cycle resets. The pigmentation in your hair is just like, I gotta take a minute and you might see some gray hair here and there. And then, you know, the cycle continues on and that hair falls out and you know, the, the gray hair might not stay there for super long. Um, I dye my hair. So I'm not really able to like monitor that super close. <laughs> But just when my roots grow out and the blonde roots kind of show themselves, 
there are just when the light hits them in that specific way there's little those little silver babies and i think that's really cool i'm looking forward to to going gray i think i'm gonna be a really hot little gray old lady another thing that i think for the most part has convinced me that like i i'm good not going back on birth control man i just i feel better I just feel better. Like mood wise, I think I've stabilized. I haven't experienced one of those like intense nuclear anger meltdowns in quite a while. Um, I can just kind of like ride the wave of things that upset me. Like if you get a little bit irritated, something doesn't go your way, your roommate leaves dishes in the sink, whatever, what, whatever it is, I just feel a lot more like it's water off a duck's back. Like it'll be fine. Um, and you know how, like, you know, if you're on birth control, maybe you, you recognize this, maybe this is an experience that you might have too. Just like the random crying. I don't really do that now. Like, yeah, when I hear a beautiful song or see a really sad video, oh, yeah, yeah, tears might happen. But just those those nights when you're lying in bed and all of a sudden you just feel like just intense despair and just cry yourself to sleep and you don't really, sometimes you just, you need a good cry. But when it's it's just kind of out of nowhere and really intense like that, yeah, I, I haven't really had that experience in the past few years since quitting birth control. Um, and yeah, like how before, the highs were not that high, but the lows were really low and I would stay there. Like I can get to a low place emotionally sometimes, but like it doesn't last super long. Um, and I just, I feel lighter most of the time. And it's just, it's nice. It's just really nice. <laughs> um, my period, hmm, she has come back and boy, when she arrives, does, does she just, she takes up space, she eats all my food, she, you know, she really makes her presence known now. Um, I do have an app that I use to track it now, um, Flow, F-L-O, I think a lot of people use it. Um, and that's just good to just stay on top of the date. Um, and the app does notify you if you're late, if you're having like a weird symptom pattern. So those are, that that's really nice to be able to keep track of. Um, I found that she is a little bit less regular now. Like the app will say she's coming on Wednesday and maybe she won't come until Friday or she's coming on Wednesday and maybe she'll show up on Monday. Like I gotta just kind of be ready that general week. Um, but it's still as consistent as, as one could hope. Um, the flow has definitely gotten back to closer, you know, to what it was when I was a teenager where like, it's intense. Um, but it tends to only be the first like day, day and a half. So manageable. Um, the pain levels are maybe a little bit stronger than they were when I was on birth control. Um, but not so intense that I need to like take Advil with any consistency, which is nice. Um, and I also just find that like you feel the rhythm of your cycle more. Like two or three days before, I will just be like irritated about stuff. I don't really know why. And then it's like, mm, nope, Th this, is, this is a one or two day thing. This feeling will pass and it's related to Aunt Flo. Um, or just like the cravings. Like I, I find myself just becoming like a human dumpster and eating everything in my pantry. And like, you know how like you just, you become a bottomless pit sometimes with your appetite. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I know now that like, it's okay. It's related to this thing that's coming next week. Um, so you just, you, you feel those things. At least I've been feeling those things a little bit more pointedly. So overall, I don't really have any regrets. Um, I think birth control was something that I needed to be on at the time because that was the life that I was living. Um, and it helped me definitely get through those latter years of high school and, and through college. It definitely kept me safe as far as pregnancy goes during that time. Um, so I don't necessarily regret having been on it 
as long as I was, but I do think I got off it at the right time. I'm not trying to become pregnant. I don't have any plans to become kids. So my partner and I use an alternate form of birth control. So that's just kind of taken care of. Um, but I feel like as I'm, you know, in my Saturn return and getting closer to 30, I'm just in my healing era. It's, it's just, it's time to heal my relationship with myself and my hormones and my emotions. I find myself being a lot nicer to myself now. For a long time, I kind of felt like, not that I was born into the wrong body, but just like, there has to be something wrong with this design. Like this, this cannot be right. I think sometimes about that scene from Fleabag where she's talking to the older woman at the bar and the older woman is like, we're born with pain built in. And that's true for many ways. And when I was younger, I just remember feeling so jaded and just so like, I was built wrong. Like there's no way from an evolutionary standpoint, this makes sense. Like pain is not a good thing to be feeling. It has to be, it has to be some, there has to be something wrong with me. I think now I've come to look at my period and look at my cycle as a love letter. You know, think of it as a love letter, as like a monthly check-in. If you are not treating your body well, if you're not eating the right foods, you're not sleeping enough, you're not managing your stress very well, your body is going to let you know in this very <laughs> concise, direct way. And it forces you to listen to yourself more. And that can only be a good thing. Yeah. So I think I'll leave it at that. Maybe I'll do another video with additional thoughts, opinions, and feelings. But if you are thinking about doing the same thing, maybe leave a comment. We'll talk about it. Definitely, definitely look into Dr. Jolene Brighton. Um, maybe I'll find some of her podcasts, like when she was a guest on, on certain podcasts, and I'll post the links here as well. Um, she's one of those amazing podcast guests who can, like, she just talks. Like, she's just a wealth of knowledge, and she just gives it for free. She has books, she has supplements, she will do coaching with you. Um, but even just listening to these podcasts, which are free, um, you, you can really learn, really learn a lot and at least get, you know, an initial batch of knowledge to, you know, if that's going to influence your decision on whether or not to actually quit birth control or to find something else. Um, but again, like I said, talk to your doctor, have a professional walk you through it. If you have any questions, YouTube is not the place to come to. Definitely don't come to me with questions about anything like directly medical. I'm happy to answer any kind of questions pertaining to my experience and, and you know, how it went for me. Um, I'm fine to be totally open with it. Um, but yeah, let me know. I'm glad I did this.